Our next speaker is the ever mysterious Thomas Little. Thank you, Moira. We're still good for volume in the back. All right, lovely. So thanks. Get that up a little bit higher. I'm Thomas Little, and my speech is entitled "Deconstruction and Rematerialization." It's about what happens when you take stone carving, a medium that's been around for 10,000 years or more, and combine it with digital video. And this presentation is about my progression from being a traditional sculptor into a mixed media artist. So I will begin with some traditional sculpture. So our series of hands I did some years ago, this is how I got into the program, just doing things of this nature. These are alabaster hands, life size, holding various tools. And another one here. And this one is more recent. It's a block of limestone, the drapery, that's that's made out of stone, that's carved into the stone. And see there's a hole in the shape of a vase, that's right, a vase. We go through to the other side where we have a more abstract geometrical composition. So in terms of skill and technique, I can carve just about anything I want to. But I was getting rather frustrated with this, this method of creating sculpture and displaying it for a couple of reasons. And the big one is stone carving is a very tactile medium. And there's a lot of different textures you can get in stone. But in a traditional display, in a gallery display, you don't really get that. And the viewer, viewer doesn't get the texture at all. It's just a visual experience. I mean, you can always put up a sign that says, please feel free to touch the sculptures. But even then, most people aren't going to do it. So to get around that, to get beyond that, I should say, second semester, I made this piece here. It's called Virtual Zen. It's my old laptop that stopped working. So I took it apart, replaced the screen with this wood burning of a Japanese Zen garden. Those stones right there, those are actual stones protruding from the screen. I've got some white marble, some alabaster, and soapstone. Some of them are polished, some are more textured. I didn't touch them at all. That way you get a, a good range of hardness and a good range of texture. And texture, I think, is a very important part of sculpture. Don't just take my word for it and talk to the modern art critic Herbert Reed, who says, Sculpture is an art of palpation. It's an art that gives satisfaction in the touching and handling of objects. The only way we can have a direct sensation of the three-dimensional is to let our hands move over it, to get the physical sensation of touch and the essential contrast of shape and texture. So here's another view of the keyboard, or where the keyboard used to be. Took that out, replaced it with sand and rocks and small circuit boards so you can move those around, make your own Zen garden. And even the touchpad there at the bottom, I replaced that with different types of stone as well. So it's not just a visual piece to be seen. It's tactile, it's interactive. But another thing about stone carving that I didn't like is most of the time the viewer only sees the finished product. Like this piece right here. This is the mighty magnolia, that's a state flower of Louisiana, that's where I'm from. So the viewer, they see just the finished product, they don't see the tools, the time, they don't see how it was done, and they don't see the different phases that I had to go through in order to get there. Like this picture here. And here's another piece that demonstrates this. I didn't do this, this is at the Museum of Fine Arts right here in Boston. It's in the ancient Egypt section, some pharaohs various stages of carving. You see on the left it's very blocky, very angular. As it progresses, it gets smoother and more detailed until you have the finished product there at the end. So I wanted to find a way to illustrate this process in, a, in an interesting and engaging way. And I didn't really want to show just process. I also wanted to show the experience to show what I feel while I'm carving the stone. But at the time, I didn't really know how to put this experience into words, but lucky for me, somebody wrote an entire book about it. <laughs> it's called Flow, the Psychology of Optimal Experience. It's written by a Hungarian psychologist, this guy. <laughs> Come to find out, that's how he pronounced his name, Csikszentmihalyi, but I'm just going to call him Dr. C from now on. And Dr. C comments on this 
experience that we feel when we're just completely absorbed in what we're doing and we shut out everything else. It calls this experience flow, the state in which people are so involved in an activity that nothing else seems to matter. The experience itself is so enjoyable that people will do it even at great cost for the sheer sake of doing it. And that's what stone carving is for me. It's not so much about creating a finished product display. It's about the process, the experience, and the act of actually doing it. So I started to look at some other process artists. Begin with Robert Morris, Continuous Project, Altered Daily. What we're looking at here, this is three different photos of different stages of an installation. It's made up of plywood and dirt and other materials. And every day he would come in, he would disarrange some things, take a few things out, until at the end, there at the bottom, he has just an empty room. So there was no finished product, and the meaning comes from the, the process, the transition that took place during the installation. Moving on to, I think we all know Andy Goldsworthy. It's one of his signature pieces, a cairn. That's what it's called, a cairn, a stack of rocks. He makes a lot of temporary sculptures out of various natural materials, wood, snow, stone, and then he records it as it's dematerialized by the natural elements. Either the wind blows it away or or the tide rises up and carries it out to sea. So what we're looking at is not really a finished product. This is, you might even say this is when it, the real work of art begins, when, when nature takes over. Talk about two other artists who use destruction or deconstruction as part of their work. This is Gordon Matta Clark, his building cuts of the 1970s. He'd go into an abandoned building, cut a shape out of the floor, then he would display it right there in the gallery. I think a lot of you remember Damien Ortega's exhibit last year over at the ICA. This is a Volkswagen Beetle that he took apart, suspended from the ceiling. So all these artists gave me a lot of ideas about deconstruction, about installation, about temporary art, and about combining video with my work, which is something I hadn't done until about a year ago. So moving on to this piece I carved about two or three years ago. It's kind of an abstract, non-objective piece. Tried to sell it all over North Louisiana. It wasn't happening. So I decided to use it as part of a video experiment. I should back up for just a second. I got my chisels, my hammer and chisel, and I just defaced this thing basically. I cut away all the features on the surface until it looked like this right here. The original plan was to just beat the whole thing into dust, but that was taking too long, so... <laughs> I just cut it until it was a rectangular block, more or less. And at the time, I was still learning about video, so I purchased these, this set of DVDs of some of the earliest movies ever made, from about 1880s or thereabouts. I'm going to play one right now for you. It's one of my favorite ones. It says, Demolition of a Wall, 1895, by the Lumiere Brothers. I cut the sound out, it's just piano music anyway, and so I can narrate as well. So what we see here, we got some guys, some workers about to knock this wall over using that crank contraption over there. It's getting a little bit of help. Here it goes, bam. Now they're going to come in with some pickaxes and bust up the rest of it. Now in just a second here it's going to cut to black and then the video is going to start playing in reverse. There it goes. So now we see the wall coming back together, being rematerialized, if you will. And wait for it. And jump. <laughs> Love that part. So that gave me an idea of what to do. This one video I made earlier where I defaced the stone, I took the footage and I reversed it. I'm going to play just a snippet from that. Too far. There it goes. 
Again, I took the sound out of this one too. I was having a lot of issues with sound when I made my first video, so I just cut it out completely. See the dust coming back onto the stone? It's going in reverse. Speeding it up, slowing it down. Makes it more interesting to watch, otherwise the video would be you know, 15, 20 hours long. Now right, here's the before and the after, or it's the after and before. And again, you saw us speeding up, slowing it down, reversing it, not only to make it more fun to watch, but also to illustrate this distortion of time that I feel in my brain when I'm carving the stone. Moving on to the next one. This distortion of time is something that Dr. C again comments on. So it's one of the most common descriptions of optimal experience is that time no, no longer seems to pass the way it ordinarily does. The objective external duration we measure with reference to outside events is rendered relevant by the rhythms dictated by the activity. I think that's something as artists that we can all, that we all experience, just being completely absorbed when we're doing our thing. And that all builds up to my final project. It's a video, it's an installation that communicates the entire experience of stone carving by appealing to as many senses as reasonably possible. I'm going to play just a teaser clip for you. There it goes. Actually, I hadn't seen it on a big screen. I'm going to watch it. <laughs> well, the actual video does have sound. I just cut it out for the presentation. And that is all you get to see tonight, of course. If you want to see the whole thing, you have to come to the show next Saturday, 8 o'clock. So I will conclude with another quote by Dr. C. It says, The best moments in our lives usually occur when a person's body or mind is stretched to its limits in a voluntary effort to accomplish something difficult and worthwhile. And that's what this project has been for me, and that's what my experience at AIV has been as well. Thank you. Time for questions. Questions. Cameron. I really enjoyed that. And Thank you. I've always really enjoyed watching film factory as a of But what I missed is what that signifies for you personally. Well, I think I forgot to talk about that. It's the <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't have a script. I'm what that signifies, and actually it does signify something, is this sense of creation that I feel when I'm carving the stone, even though it's a subtractive medium. Mr. Newman. So what's the relation between you between creation and destruction? That's a very interesting question, and uh, that's one thing that my piece explores is is there really a, that much of a distinction between creation and destruction, especially where stone carving is involved? It's, I mean, in order to create something, you have to destroy the material. Yes? Uh, perhaps related and, and, and maybe uh, difficult to articulate, but I get the feeling that, that your experience in the program, um, the, the actual content of the sculpture itself became less important to you. It was something that you let go. And I'm wondering if that's, first of all, that's a fair assessment, and second of all, that's, if you think that's going to continue for you. I mean, the sculpture itself sort of became secondary to the act of negation. Right, that's absolutely right. I mean, started off, it was, I mean, I, I had a very classical, traditional training as an artist before coming into this thing. So it was all about the finished product. So 
But the I mean, ride is, is, is there a point at which it's about, I mean, do, do you miss the sort of act of creating something from nothing? Or is that? Creating something from nothing, you say? Yeah, the act of <laughs> chiseling out, you know, pre starting with the, you know, the, the empty piece of stone and making something representational out of it. Not really. Because, again, I'm from North Louisiana, and selling stone carvings is a very hard thing to do. So, so I would much rather make a stone and destroy it and get it all on tape than make a stone and try to sell it and not. Yes? Hmm. Well, as regards to future work, I haven't planned anything in my life past the end of this residence, so... <laughs> I, sorry, I can't really answer that at this time. <laughs> James. Um, did you look at all at William Kendrick's uh, videos of the work? No. Creating something by playing the structure of something in reverse and the opposite of that. I have to check into that, yeah. In the back corner. Um, about the very interesting the transition that you went through between the production of the final logic and the involvement in the process of what you're doing from your structure. What's your relationship now to what you end up with the final object? Uh, What's your attachment to that object now that you've gone through the experience of either destroying or creating? Do you have a different way of relationship now with that final piece? Are you less attached, more attached? Significantly less attached. I mean, there's no way not to be. Mr. Paces? Um. I hope it's not really true they haven't planned anything after um, <laughs> Friday, um, next Friday. I'm sorry, that is the truth. Um, well, I'm on your thesis defense committee, and I think you better think of something by then. Oh, no. <laughs> because one of the things I think is very important is, is that, I mean, one of the things that this program is always about is planning what you're going to do next. I mean, that's what we do in all the residencies. And um, I would just hate to think that you're going to leave here and not have not have a project, not have a thing you're planning to do next. I think it's extremely important to, to, to always have the next thing pulling you forward. Right. Well, my plan was to get the speech out of the way and then okay. get, get the rest of my life in order. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Am I done? Thank you.